Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. Welcome back to Microbiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing a test called the lecithinase test, and this is used to detect whether or not bacteria express the enzyme lecithinase. But before we get into all these details over here about how the test is run and interpreting the results, let's look at a little bit of theory of the lecithinases. So first of all, lecithins, these are mixtures of phospholipids. So phospholipids, recall, are compounds that make up the plasma membrane, and lecithins are mixtures of these phospholipids. For example, they can contain any of these subtypes of phospholipids, like phosphatidylcholines, phosphatidylethanolamines, phosphatidylinositols, phosphatidylserines, even phosphatidic acids. And if you have a mixture of any of these compounds, that would be lecithins. Now, lecithinases are enzymes that break down the lecithins. And we know which one's the enzyme because we see the ace at the end. So here is an example of a phospholipid down here. We'll look at these structures in a little more detail in the next slide, but basically what the lecithinase is gonna do is it's going to use water and it's gonna break this bond with the arrow right there, okay, between this oxygen right there of the glycerol backbone and the phosphorus of this phosphate right here. So again, Phospholipids are composed of a glycerol backbone, just like triglycerides, except instead of having three fatty acids, they only have two. So this one in green up here, here's the first fatty acid. This one in blue right here is the second fatty acid. But unlike triglycerides, the phospholipids instead have only two fatty acids, and then they have this phosphate with a head group. And so you have this phosphate right here, which has the phosphorus and several oxygen atoms and then attached to one of those is some other compound. And this whole thing in red here is the head group. Now, as we mentioned, lecithinases are gonna use water to break this bond right here between this oxygen of the glycerol and this phosphorus of the phosphate. Really, this whole thing is the head group. And when the lecithinase hydrolyzes this bond, it splits it into what we see down here, which is phosphocholine, just generally a head group, and diacylglycerol, or DAG. And the reason this is diacylglycerol is because the acyl refers to the fatty acid tail, and there's two of them, di, and then it has a glycerol, diacylglycerol, or DAG. Okay. So as we just talked about, the products of a lecithinase's reaction on a phospholipid are diacylglycerol and the head group. Now, what's important to realize is that diacylglycerol is hydrophobic. It's water insoluble, and so it doesn't like to be around water. Therefore, molecules of DAG, when they're produced, they stick together and they clump. And actually, when you have a lot of these DAG molecules that are produced, they form a precipitate because they don't like water. They like to stick with each other. And so when you're interpreting a lecithinase test, if a you have a positive lecithinase organism, it'll actually have a white opaque precipitate around the streak. So let's talk about why that happens. So first of all, in the lecithinase test, the, egg, the agar is actually composed of egg yolk. And the reason for that is egg yolk contains a lot of phospholipids. That's good because that is going to be the substrate that lecithinases will act on. Now let's consider for a moment if we have a negative lecithinase organism, meaning they do not express lecithinase. Well, you put these organisms on the agar, which is egg yolk, and nothing's gonna happen, right? All the phospholipids that are present in the egg yolk, they just sit there because they're not being broken down. There's no enzyme in those bacteria to do that. And so therefore, there's no precipitate. And so on the left here, this would be an example of bacteria that is negative for lecithinase. So all you'll see is the streak, okay? Now over here on the right, let's suppose we have a positive lecithinase organism. What did we just say lecithinases do? They break down phospholipids into this head group with the phosphate that comes off and this diacylglycerol. Well, this diacylglycerol is hydrophobic. It's water insoluble. It doesn't like water. And so it's gonna choose to clump with other molecules of diacylglycerol. And so those diacylglycerol clumps 
present as a precipitate, which is going to be a white opaque border around the streak. So this bacteria right here, this is positive for lecithinase, and we can tell because it has this halo, or really it's going to be a white opaque border around the streak. And literally what this white opaque border is, is it's clumps of diacylglycerol. The reason you don't see those clumps around the negative organism is because they don't have the enzyme to break down the phospholipids. Therefore, they're producing zero diacylglycerol, so there's going to be no precipitate. Over here, where you have a positive organism, there's plenty of precipitate because they're breaking down that phospholipid into diacylglycerol, which then clumps. And so the key there is if you see a white opaque clumping border around the organism, you have a positive lecithinase organism. Here's another look at a positive test. Again, here's the lecithinase agar, which is just egg yolk agar. And you see the streak here in white, but then you see this white clumping around that entire streak. It almost looks like a halo, kind of like what we saw in the lipase test. And if you see that, you know you have a positive organism. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the theory behind the lecithinase test and interpreting the results. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.